What's up guys and welcome back to another episode of Headphones Neil Reviews. I'm your host as always, Headphones Neil, with the with the first of the current style of episodes that I want to release, where I release a video version of the podcast as well alongside the audio version. So I thought I would do a special recap update kind of episode for what I'm watching, where I'm at, and not necessarily an update of, you know, back-end stuff that I've been meaning to do for a while. So for this particular episode, I wanted to do a quick catch-up review for, or start it off with, The Mandalorian and The Bad Batch. So with The Mandalorian, I thought it was a particularly good episode because we finally get to see the redemption of Din. Um, Bo-Katan also gets um, redeemed because she rescued um, Din, she bathed in the water, all of that stuff. So it was good to see them back. But I'm curious to see what they do now, especially with Bo-Katan's knowledge of the mythosaur that's underneath the waters of Mandalore. If they ultimate, if she ultimately shares her knowledge, doesn't share it, um, wants to have Din do it, see if he can, see if he's potentially the return of Mandalore or something like that. So I'm curious to see about all that. And then also on the flip side, if they use the Tie Fighters and the capture of that Doctor guy as a means to transition into the introduction of Thrawn into this series and the kickoff for the Ahsoka series, mostly because they spend a lot of time with that Doctor or Doctor Pershing, I think, on Coruscant in the ISB or what looked like the ISB because it looked very similar to the scenes that we got from Andor. So when you're watching the episode, it'll be a nice connection there if you liked Andor. Um, so I think the reason that they spent a lot of time with that talking about how Moff Gideon was captured but ultimately escaped and um, escaped from Republic custody. So he must have some, a really powerful friend. So to me, that just seems like a subtle way of saying that Thrawn is still around and in power uh, with the um, presence of all those TIE fighters all at once and Bo-Katan saying she doesn't know any recent, or I think it was Bo-Katan who said that she doesn't remember any recent crime lord having that many TIE fighters. So it feels like it's, something that Thrawn could do or would do to be consolidating power, gathering up all the as much Imperial stuff as he can, and using it to his advantage. And Mandalore would be a good hiding place because no one would think to go there. So all in all, it feels like that's kind of where we're going with the Mandalorian to set all of that stuff up. So whether that happens in this season or the next, um, that's kind of where, I, like I said, that's kind of where I think we're going um, at the very least, Thrawn might be the season three finale um, uh, cliffhanger into the Ahsoka series. So um, that's kind of where we're going. I don't know if the whole uh, Mythosaur Mandalore thing will be something that they show in this season or in the next one, but it feels like it might even be its own. It could be its own series season, or it could be one of those things that they set up where all the Mandalorians go to Mandalore to fight the beast to see who's going to be the next Mandalore. Uh, they make their pick um, and all of that stuff, but then that causes Thrawn to come out and, you know, walk out like Luke did at the end of the last season. Um, Vader walking onto the Tantid of Four, and that's the same kind of thing, just like walk on as a presence, and then that's the, you know, end scene, roll credits, we're out kind of thing. So... Uh, with that being said, that's kind of my foretelling. Um, I'm still holding hope that the Mythosaur that was awakened was because of not only Din and Bo-Katan going into the waters um, of Mandalore, but because there is a Sith tomb that Emperor Palpatine found and was looking for to expand his uh, Sith powers. So that would be a good connection backwards to um, deal with the Siege of Mandalore and ties that some of that stuff together with why was the empire so um and at the time the republic so interested in mandalore and that is the reason why just to bring up some of that information so um with that being said i'll move on into the bad batch not much to say there it was kind of a downturn kind of episode for the batch to regroup relax recuperate get some rest um, overall a good episode for them to return and relax. Um, my main takeaway was not really Bad Batch related, but more of expanding on the planet of Octo that Luke Skywalker was on. 
because that's kind of what this island reminded me of. Um, along the lines of, you know, kind of like an Avatar or Way of Water style planet or, um, you know, just your traditional fishing villages kind of situation where you have a lot of different cultures and islands and things like that that are disparate, but then they, you know, boat together to trade, exchange goods and wares and things like that. So Luke Skywalker's little island for the Jedi and the birth or the birth of the Jedi and the caretakers exchange goods and supplies with these people kind of thing. So I think that was kind of a subtle way of doing that. I didn't really do any research to see if that's true or not, but that's kind of the vibe that I got out of um, the episode and the island and all of that. So we'll see how all of that comes together to, um, like, well, if it matters if they end up filling that in or what becomes of this particular episode. Um, so with that being said, um, to catch up on some app reviews, um, so last week I got access to the Google Photos feature, Magic Eraser. So if you're a Google One subscriber, um, anyone can get access to this feature now. So on the Android side of things, if you use Google Photos and you're a Google One subscriber on any tier, then when you go into edit photos, you can actually remove unwanted items using Magic Eraser the same way that you can on a Pixel phone. So it's as easy as it sounds, open up a picture, hit the edit button. If there's a recommendation right off the bat that Google Photos will let you remove stuff from, it'll show up on that first screen of recommend or suggested edits. If it doesn't show up, it doesn't mean that there's not stuff it can suggest, it just didn't pick stuff up that was obvious. So if you go over to, I think, the adjust or, um, or tools tab and, um, and then select, ma select magic eraser, um, it'll still give you suggestions if you find stuff so you can, you know, do erase all or select one by one which one you want to remove and use that. If it doesn't give you any suggestions or if it um, suggests stuff but then there's stuff that, that you do want to remove, you can still do it from here. Regardless, so like I said, regardless of if it suggests things or not, but if you zoom into what you want to erase, draw a circle around it and it'll erase it. As simple as that. Save your changes and you're all good. Um, nothing more to do from there and um, essentially it is as simple as that. I'm really having a blast playing with it. I've gone through a few pictures here and there to do that with just to see how good it is. Of course the newer and sharper and clearer the image the better it will work. Not to say it doesn't work on older images but it does have trouble if your image is blurry, um, if it's an older picture. Or, you know, pictures of cross people with different model phones. So if you're, someone sends you a picture from their phone that they, you know, it could be a picture they took today, but the phone is four years old, then things like that will be a little bit harder, but it can still be done. So, you know, for example, my sister has like a four-year-old cell phone and will send me pictures. They're good enough, but they're, you know, they're still not, you know, HD quality. But then, um, for example, her husband will send a picture that's higher quality and it'll work better. So... Things like that, and I mentioned that just to have a third-party explanation of it rather than, you know, my pictures on my current device are up to the quality I like. And even then, it's not necessarily 100%. If you notice, if you take a picture that's too, you take it too fast and it's blurry kind of thing. So, um, with that being said, like I said, um, the better the picture quality, the better Magic Racer will work. But it can work on any image, Just you just have to play around with it. So, definitely check that out. Now, as far as other features on a Google One subscription, um, I actually just got, within about a day or two of this recording, access to the Google One VPN service. So I'm not going to actually recommend it yet because I haven't had enough time to play with it, but if you want a basic VPN to protect your data, so far it seems pretty good. Um, surfing speeds with it are about on par with other major VPNs like Nord and ExpressVPN. So I def so if you are a Google One subscriber, want something basic, it may be the way to go. The number one or the top thing that I hear online is that it does require that you are okay with your data going, still going through Google servers. So I still think it's going to be one of those things where it's going to require time to see how well it works and what, and if, you know, things like, certain data is blocked on Google, but not on other VPNs and vice versa. So um, when I've had more time to play with it, I'm definitely going to review it at that point. But about a day or two in, so far is good. Browsing speeds are good. It does have that split tunneling feature like ExpressVPN and NordVPN. So if there's apps that 
you find that don't work or have trouble because of the VPN, you can mark them as exempt and um, traffic will not be routed through the VPN. So off the bat, off the top of my head, um, I know Google Voice is kind of finicky. Um, I haven't had a chance to play with um, video streaming apps like Netflix and Amazon Prime, but that is on my to-do list to see how good or bad they work and if it does unblock things. But um, base level, it seems to work. It's easy to set up. Um, so if you don't want, you know, a third party or third party VPN, or you don't mind using Google as your VPN service, then, um, so far it seems there's no reason why you can't go with them, especially if you have a Google one subscription and then you get things like magic eraser and Google photos, you get additional photo and video storage and things like that. So it becomes the backend service version of what Amazon prime does for their stuff so um so like i said early early reviews i recommend it but i'm not going to set that in stone because it depends on how it performs over time so with that being said um as far as the roadmap for upcoming reviews um i am working my way through all quiet on the western front um it won some oscars i, I liked some of the trailers and previews of it so i decided to give it a watch I'm still only about 30 minutes into it, and so far the audio and visuals are really nice, so I'm going to recommend it for that, but it is a slow burn in early on at least, so once I get through that, I'll give it a review, see how good or bad it is, but um, so far I do want to say that it is a recommended watch. Um, I am watching it on Netflix, so um, there is that. Um, as far as a review after that, I will be working my way through the Star Wars live-action sequels, so... Um, I, the reviews for the prequels and the original trilogy are already up on the podcast feeds. So if you're just coming to the uh, YouTube channel or the, my podcast now, um, definitely subscribe. They're up on the feed for all for 2023, my current year reviews for the movie. So you can definitely check them out. Um, and then if you prefer the website instead of a podcast client, you can check them out there as well. But um, they're available on a podcast client. And then I, um, after that, I will be watching The Last of Us. Um, I've heard really good reviews from independent friends who like different genres that it's a really good show. I keep hearing online and through different communities that I'm in that there it's a really good show. So I'm going to give that a watch as well, see how good it is. I do like Pedro Pascal as an actor, and then the lady who played Liana Morma from Game of Thrones is in it. So uh, both good actors, so I, wanna, I do want to watch that. So that's on my bucket list um, as well to watch uh, very, very soon. And then, of course, coming by the end of this month will be my second part in my 10-part review for the Knott's 100-year anniversary. So it'll be for the Boysenberry Festival, so look out for that. Um, I'll do the whole thing with, if I take videos, it'll be up on the YouTube channel with the Knott's 100-year anniversary playlist. I'll do the companion posts on the blog for the pictures um, that I take, and I'll do the review of all that with my experience and what I thought some of the food and snacks I ate, which um, alcohol I had, and whether I had it from one of the stands or the saloon, and all of that good stuff. So that's all there is for this particular um, episode and review. So look out for more, like I said, on the YouTube channel and on the website or on the podcast uh, feed. Um, all links can be found on the website at headphonesneal.reviews. Um, social media links to follow me, comment on this post of um, your recommendations, what you like, don't like, what I should review in the future, and things like that. Um, the YouTube channel is youtube.com slash pateln01. So, um, like I said, this video will be up there. Um, the um, gameplay videos for GoldenEye that I'm going through are up there. I'm about halfway through that. I just got past the part where you meet Yanos, um, Agent 006. So... Um, that's about how far I'm into the gameplay for that. Um, and then, of course, subscription links for the podcast, ways to support my content. Um, if you want to give something back, all of that's on the website, again, at headphonesneal.reviews. But that is all for this particular episode. Thanks for tuning in, and until next time.